Welcome to the ATP Project. Um, today we're going to be talking about health market trends and we're going to be talking to Matt about his trip to Las Vegas. Yes, and it has nothing to do with gambling or drinking or anything like that. It's all to do with health, so please enjoy. Thanks for listening. As always, this information is not designed to diagnose, treat, prevent or cure any condition and is for information purposes only. Please discuss any information in this podcast with your healthcare professional before making any changes to your current lifestyle. Stay tuned. The ATP Project is about to start. Welcome to the ATP Project. Delivering the irreverent truth about health, aging, performance and looking good. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, ready to perform at your best or somewhere in between, then sit back, relax and open your mind as Jeff and Matt battle the status quo and discuss everything health related that can make you better. Hey, g'day. Welcome to the ATP Project. You're with your hosts... Matt and Steve and no Jeff. No Jeff, where's Jeff? Uh, spontaneously combusted, oh. left with a little green blob on his chair, just a little stain similar to that former drummer from Spinal Tap. Yeah, Spinal Tap, Muse Eyes, I tell you, you got to love them. Oh, I do, they're weirdos. <laughs> now, <laughs> that's not what we're talking today. No, about today today about we're music. talking about some industry trends. We're going to talk about some of the, we talk about the industry trends, like mm. what's coming up, where we're heading towards with herbal botanicals, amino acids and that sort of stuff, different forms of proteins, um, all based on a trade show that I've been to recently mm. um, to see what's coming out. Um, and very popular at the moment. Mm-hmm. I also attended quite a few little um, educational um, talks, and I tell you what, they let, I don't know why they let me into some of them, uh, <laughs> because, um, man, they should have really screened the people that go into it, because I managed to go into some seminars that were talking about the same... Okay, so multiple seminars saying mm. the same thing. We're talking about the environment, mm. okay? We're talking about trends for the future. We're talking about sustainable or regenerative farming. Mm. We're talking about um, topsoil, um, all those sort of things. And when we're talking about the food industry, I mean, this is what the food industry is. We've mm-hmm. got to work out ways of finding solutions to the existing problems. Right, so we're talking about things like we'll say global warming and yep. over farming and mono farming and weeds and Yeah, and round sprays up and, and all that sort of stuff. And Genetically modified uh, GMO labeling and whether to label, yeah. whether not to label. Um, so some really interesting discussions because I managed to go into some talks which were, people might were talking about how well, the earth, the, we, we, the, the, the world is dying. Okay? Yeah. Um, the topsoil in particular is dying and they believe we've got 40 to, 60, 40 to 60 years of topsoil left. 40 to 60 years. If we continue the way we're going with our existing farming practices, with the topsoil that is used at the moment mm. with agriculture, we have 40 to 60 years left of growing produce for us to eat right so, so what do you mean by existing practices like what's what what's what specifically is harming the soil oh so a lot of the problem well we talked a lot about the history of how soil was made and how mm. they believe this all occurred um where we talked about bacteria fungi and nutrients mm. okay so decomposed plant matter with existing minerals from rocks and mm-hmm. the water and that sort of stuff in conjunction with bacteria and fungi mm-hmm. are capable of decomposing and stuff to create soil yes so i talked about a scenario where the first bit of soil might have been made in a puddle on a rock with some seaweed mm-hmm. um, along with some bacteria some fungi and the minerals from the rock mm-hmm. and that created soil okay yes. and then they talk about that process then covering the earth um but also now so when we've been talking about our soil definitely the use of things like roundup Mm -hmm. has a major problem Um, we've lost the ability to regenerate that soil between crops and they believe if we continue to go the way we're going we've got 40 to 60 years so so just just for those people who may not know roundup is a spray that kills plants yeah yeah the main comment is glyphosate Um, glyphosate combined with the poa makes it penetrate through to cells and Mm -hmm. be more dangerous Mm. um and that's what roundup is yeah um but if it's not roundup it could be something else. Mm. So it's really important for us to not just jump on a bandwagon to ban a an ingredient or mm. a product. Mm. We need to understand the concept and create a proper scenario or solutions towards fixing this. So, so, so in this in this scenario, like I said, two, let me just tell you about two different seminars I went to. Oh, okay. One was run by these guys saying the world is dying. We've got 40 to 60 years yes. of um, soil left. And they presented their solutions on how we're going to save the world. Good. And then I had exactly the same topic the next day mm. with totally different solutions. Right. Now, 
what's really cool about it is they had the same emotional marketing campaign. So these both sides of the story were saying educating us of the same problem, okay? Right. That farming practices, global warming, environmental impact, all this sort of stuff, hmm. what it's doing to our farming. Okay. okay. And they talk in regards to the topsoil predominantly. Yeah. So talking about depletion of the topsoil. Mm. Um, so what was really interesting it is, is on the first day, I tell you what's here, funny, man. I don't know, maybe because I was wearing a suit or something. I felt obligated on that you first day. You wore a day. suit? Yeah, man. Well, everyone oh in the foyer was wearing it. And I took one because I got a new one recently. That's um, right. So yeah. I thought I'd take one. Um, so I took my suit and I noticed everyone in the foyer was wearing the suits with the name badges. I was thinking, because I went there years previously and... A lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of the, um, you know, the CEOs or the, mm. the important people of the bigger brands, you know, they'll mm. all wear their suits with their name badges and stuff like that and, you know, hang out and, you know, look adulty and yeah. stuff like that. Um, so I thought, oh, I'll try, you know, I'll get in amongst this. So maybe that's why they let me into this particular lecture. Yes. But anyway, I was sitting in this lecture and they were actually, bu- it was run by suits. Okay. Right. So everyone in the crowd, I'm looking around, were all suits. Most of them were men. I don't know if that's a thing, but uh, oh, I mean, it is a thing. We typically have men and women. Yeah, there's and typically. Those, yeah. And, and shit, Even in Vegas. And, yeah, yeah. No, well, the, it's everywhere in the world. You can be whatever you want. I'm just not even going to no, go down that go path. There. You can be whoever and whatever you want. So basically, in this crowd of suits, and they had some people presenting. So recently in Europe, they mm. changed the laws in Europe. To where you got to label GMO? Good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So what's happened is all the Europeans are now moved to America because in yeah. America you don't have to label GMO. Oh, boo. Yeah. What? So so what's happening is um, I was sitting in a seminar while they were doing while we had the spin doctors yes. talking about how we're going to infiltrate American market with all the GMO science that they can't use through Europe because now that they're labeling it, no one wants to eat it. Right now. This is where I started getting a little bit weird Jeez. because I'm sitting there going, yeah, of course, why would we? Yeah. And then they've gone through and were insinuating that they have a moral obligation mm. to, to lie to the world. Right. Because what the idiots of the, the idiot consumers of the world. That's do you, not, by the way. Yeah, by you, by the, that's all of us. <laughs> yes. Um, the idiot consumers of the world don't understand science like these particular scientists, these handful of scientists do. Right. These couple of blokes that think they're smarter than the rest of us okay well so we're scientists they're all idiots we're all idiots steve right because what we don't understand is yeah. with this topsoil di- disappearing yes we've got 40 to 60 years to eat fresh fruit and vegetables left mm-hmm. then it's gone at the end of that what are you going to do steve i'm going to be dead well according to these people you're going to be dead or you're going to be needing genetically modified foods right you're going to need foods that are made in a lab that nice. is synthesized Yum. foods from gen- genetically modified ingredients fed to genetically modified bugs, making genetically modified food because you can't farm it, remember? No. Um, alternatively, also, also to those macronutrient fillers, mm-hmm. they can Calories. S- spike them with synthetic um, essential nutrients. Ugh. Again, made from genetically modified sugars fed to genetically modified bugs doing this. So, so far, we're mm. looking at genetically modified food um now one of the things they do with genetically modified food for example with plant crops Mm. they want they don't want the roundup to kill them so what they do is they can splice the roundup now you're a scientist but i don't know if we need to go too scientific for everyone out there but basically there's ways of splicing such compounds as roundup into the genetic material of the plant that makes that plant resistant to Roundup yep. in the sense that Roundup will no longer kill that plant. Correct. It means you can spray the entire paddock, the yep. plants and everything, and the weeds that haven't had that genetic yep. will die, yep. but the plant survives. So you can spray the crops with yeah. poison. Yeah. So what they're basically nice. saying, and even through that same technology, we can mm. probably do the same thing for humans. Wow. And so like it just as, because us idiot consumers out there don't realise this, but just like they've made plants resistant to roundup but mm. the future is probably us also being made resistant to roundup so they're talking about mm. genetically modified food mm. they're talking about genetically modified so plants yep. and animals mm-hmm. they're also talking about genetically modified bugs potentially genetically modifying humans to be able to 
tolerate all the genetically modified food. You're saying genetically modified an awful lot. It's making me a bit scared. I know. Uh, this is a worry. So so just to recap, um, America, they don't have to label GMO foods. No. So they could just bring out some food and say, oh, yes, it's, uh, they call it something else, could now, they? Yeah, yeah. Well, what's the funny thing is so we, we had a bit of a – this led into a brainstorming workshop around – creative ways of marketing genetically modified food yeah oh, you're right i've got to stop saying genetically modified what i'm going to start saying is fermented food <laughs> that's what i was trying yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. These bugs, way of calling it. one of the one of the solutions they come across is say well okay think about this like seriously just forget the genetic the gm bit and forget the gmo aspect of it what happens when we give a bug a sugar and they make something steve hmm. what's that process it's called, called fermentation fermentation so if I don't have to label GMO sugar, mm. I don't have to label a GMO bug to, to label a GMO synthetic ingredient. Yes. What is it then? I've just got a fermented, fermented. product. And you see, fermentation has, like if you ferment soy, you've got miso and that's healthy mm. for you. Yeah. Ferment, you know, cabbage, you get sauerkraut. So, so ferment, fermentation is actually, in, in the mind of the consumers, a healthy thing. Well, exactly. And it is right. branded as a health food. It's yes. labeled as a health food. Yes. And people buy it as a health food. So they, they now, buy they GMO food as a health food. Exactly. Now, what's right. really worrying about this? So I was sitting in this seminar, and this is a bit where I started getting offended because I'm a consumer. You are. I don't, I don't understand the rest of the people in the room, obviously. They are too. <laughs> but they're buying it. The, what do they eat? Like, anyway, because what they're basically saying is they, the, 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 the typical consumer, mm. they don't understand the severity of this soil running out. They don't understand that we're all about to die. Mm. We're about to move to insects, whether we like it or not. In mm -hmm. 50 years, we'll mm -hmm. be using insects as our major source of yep. nutrients because we can't grow enough for everyone. Right. Uh, coincidentally, I'll just mention this now in case I forget later. They didn't mention that 40% of the food that we make is wasted. Yeah. So they didn't mention that we're going to have a... Because they're talking about the population going out to 9 billion or something like mm. that by 2050. And that's what we've got to play, plan for. Mm. So what are we now? Seven and a bit? Seven, just over 7 billion. Yeah. So we're just over 7 billion now. 40% of our food's wasted. Our population might go up 10 or 20%. We've already got the food yeah, got there the to We've got the food cover for that already. So anyway, so they're talking about this food crisis that we're going to have and the need for genetically modifying, creating synthetics reinventing food making it out of insects mm. and the whole time lying to the consumer because if they're honest they won't buy it right because they're idiots they are and they say so what they're basically saying is that and a funny one of the, some of the quotes were disgusting um one of the quotes was um what do you say um now the consumers are idiots they have an obli a moral obligation to lie to them like i said mm, and they gave some examples of how when a consumer eats a GMO product and they don't die no. instantly, because yes. that's what they think, they're going to eat GMO and explode. This is what these guys are saying, not me. But they're saying the idiot consumers, if you lie to them and they go and eat these foods, they keep coming back for more. Right. Like that's, cigarettes. And, that's, and that was their self-fulfilling prophecy, that we're doing the right thing. Because these people are idiots. If, if we told them what it was, they wouldn't buy it. Mm. But when we don't tell them what it is, they do buy it. And when they don't die straight away, those idiots keep coming back for more and more. Yeah. They gave some examples of genetically modified foods that are in, they're using these health food claims for genetically modified food in America now. Mm. They showed some pictures of apples, pre-sliced apples that don't go brown. Mm. And they're saying, so they said, you know, like what an amazing innovation this was. We managed to remove that horrible stuff that goes brown when you slice them. That stuff that nobody wants. And I'm sitting there thinking, what, the pectin? Like that's the... <laughs> That's the it's good, the good stuff. stuff for your gut. Yeah, that's the yeah. stuff that helps our gut. And this is what we talk about with our mod biotics being yeah. stripped from a diet. Mm. So when we talk about um, losing all the polyphenols um, and tannins mm. and mod biotic compounds, that's what we're talking about exactly. These things that make a food a food, the mm. things that make a food change color or have a flavor or get bitterness when it's over ripe or whatever, mm. you know what I mean? Mm. So these are the compounds that they're gradually removing from our food anyway yes. as part of this genetic. Now, how is having sliced apples that don't go brown fixing the world's food shortage? It's bizarre. It's not. It's contributing to an environmental catastrophe with more bloody plastic packaging. Yes. If only fruit was delivered in a convenient package that yes. you could hold Something without colourful. getting juice down your arm, like Maybe a skin. Maybe green. Or, oh, <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> like these guys are taking it off the skin and slicing it and putting it in a plastic bag and then concerned that it's going brown because it's been pre-sliced. It's like, just give them an apple. Apple, bloody like, so apple. It's crazy, hey? So yeah. this is a sort of thing. So these guys... 
Now, just, I don't know, um, a lot of our listeners out there may or may not be religious. It's irrelevant um, for my discussion right now Mm because I'm not coming to you from a a preaching angle. You haven't got the white collar thing? No, man, but these, these, um, there were some things that these guys were saying that I just want people to understand what's happening because, so when you, these guys were so arrogant they obviously, they honestly thought they were so much smarter, and everyone else was idiots. Mm. And like that, the arguments or the discussions that they were having, I just could not. I, I almost, oh man. Anyway, I, I sat through it because it was just like, oh my gosh, I yes. have to be here. Like someone, one of us idiot consumers has to be here to spread the word of what I've just witnessed. Well, you're going to spread the word. You're talking religion. What, what were they talking about? Oh man. So what they were basically doing. So okay. So. They were arguing about natural. They say, is GMO natural? Yeah. They were arguing, yes, GMO is natural. So what does the M stand for in GMO? Man, Steve. Genetically no. No. modified. So it's modified. All right, so yeah. God. God, yes. Created with, man. Right, that's the Christian God? or the, We don't... No, no, no well, they, I, they didn't, didn't I didn't even think to ask those questions. Okay. So it's about the, 2000. The bloke, so. Well, the bloke that was there was saying that his God created man along the same lines of uh, the same time or days that they did the animals his god created man as well as created all the animals and the plants and everything mm. on the earth god has given men everything he needs to sustain maintain life and self-perpetuate what god started yep, yep. Um, they've been giving them the ideas they've been given the tools mm-hmm. and the brains mm-hmm. and the innovation yep therefore anything that comes from man is natural wow. so man-made is natural and they've got this belief in the back of the head that they are not only doing the right thing for the environment, saving yeah. the world. And there's people out there be listening to this podcast going, exactly right. That's what they're doing, Matt. Now, yeah. these guys are saving the world through genetically modified and through this sort of stuff. They're, yeah, All you hippie, weird hippies are idiots. These guys are doing what the hard things that need to be done. And there is a school of thought that believes that. Mm. I know quite a few people that are involved in you know, genetically mod- you know, science associated with food security. Mm-hmm. They get all the grants that we don't get to make mm. high yield wheat and that sort of rubbish. Yes. Um, so th- these guys were basically saying that not only is it natural because it's man made, but yeah. it's pretty much an act of God. Yes. And this is God's plan. Yes. To actually give these men everything they need to invent these things to fix the food security. Right. So these guys are coming from an angle where they believe what they're doing is right. These guys were basically saying, and they, this is why I think they feel it's okay to do the emotional marketing yep. to you or to lie to you. Yes. Because they genuinely believe you're an idiot and they're doing what's right for you. Mm. The problem is, is I, I don't think that's true. Really? In the sense that oh. I don't think anyone knows what's best for everyone. I don't think no. anyone knows everything. And I don't think anyone really knows enough to have that ability to make decisions for others. Right. So, so just to recap, they, they say... The, the, in, you know, to quote Genesis 1 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. On day yep. four, I think it was, someone's going to correct me, they created man and yep. therefore he created man and everything on earth. Therefore, everything is natural. Yep. Genetically modified, everything yep. is perfectly natural. Yeah, exactly. Because right. anything that comes from man is natural because he made it. That's his God plan. He wouldn't have given the innovation and the IZ, these ideas uh. and the tools to do it if it wasn't the right thing to do. Wow. And that's as the way that this is kind of it's a long stuff. bow, and isn't then, it? And then basically, we sit down for a workshop with a lawyer that tells us creative ways of labelling genetically modified things to generate sales and not go to jail. Wow! So that's when they're talking about you know these examples of fermented food. Technically, yes. if they were to come back to you and have a go, you could argue that it was a fermented, fermented food, food, and maybe get some extension in your time or whatever. Mm. I don't know what the horrifying, whatever. isn't it? But anyway, so. Oh, and part of that, man, just keep an eye out for this. This thing looks scary. I might actually get shot too by this. So if you're watching this video, it might be because I'm dead. Yes. But, man, have a look at this stuff called CRISPR. Te- or look out for it. Just keep your eye out for CRISPR technology. So it's about crisping potatoes? Or it what? sounds nice. And yeah, that's right. it sounds good. It's a very strange thing. From my understanding of it is it's talking about... Um, uh, they're using artificial intelligence in the sense that they're using databases of they're using computer technology to filter through databases of genomes from humans and from microbiome, um, combining that with potential botanical extracts and plants for, to use a computer mathematical equation to generate synthetic 
compounds out mm-hmm. of plants that fit with our genetic material. Right. Blah, so, blah, blah. It's a computer that will tell us how to splice genetic material from microbiome with plants and our humans to actually solve problems like blood pressure or cancer or something right. like that. But it's a way of... And what they do is they do a preliminary screening of all these plant materials to mm. work out ways of combining all these different genetic materials to do things. But it's marketed like a screening tool to look mm. for potential plant extracts that you could make drugs out of. Yeah, but which is... A, which makes sense. And yeah. that's what they market it for. It's like, so we're going to screen all these things. And we've got this big database of genes mm-hmm. that we're going to screen these plants with these genes to see what potentially we could make drugs out of. Wow. But also it links in all of the potential genetically modification and, and all that sort of stuff. And they can go through and say, not only would this plant maybe be a good fit for this, but if we modify it with this, it'll be better. And so there's some interesting opportunities for that power or technology to be used for evil. Geez, that's scary, isn't it? Not all scary because ah. this is a cool thing. Yes. So I walked out of that. I took yep. my suit off. Yes. I rolled my sleeves up and untucked my shirt. Good. And I went, uh, well, my hair was already messy. But then I went straight back down into the thing pretending to be a human again. Right. So, I, man, and I... I put my suit away, I never put it back on. I, hope I just realised I am not those people. So no. there's a part of the industry where these CEOs for someone else's company that's trying to get some profit share back. Mm. I don't understand what their motives are, Steve. It's very Fear weird. and greed, typically, yeah. and um, delusions profit. of arrogance. and Well, prophecy. They're profits. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> profits. Yeah. You know, you're talking profit with an F. Yes. I'm thinking the other profit where these guys go and stand on a hill and speak for us well, and that, make decisions on our behalf. That's, it, that's, that's what they're acting like. They're acting man. like profits. They are acting like profits. So, so anyway, the next day, yes. I went and sat in a room with some lovely ladies, mm. um, which is always a much better idea. I really? feel much better in a room full of lovely ladies than a room full of blokes with suits. Okay, um, yeah. Oh. Anyway, um, the three ladies up the front, one of them was this most lovely lady, um, Leah Su- Oh, I shouldn't say that. I don't know how to pronounce her, lame, her last name. Her lame, fuck, I can't even speak. Leah, we call her. And she's the head of Mumovation and Digital Mums. Mum-ovation. I recommend anyone out there that wants to get involved and get a bit more information, what she does through her group, go and hit her up to join her groups and tell her, say day from ATP in Australia because I want this lady to be my new friend because she's really cool. She works with all these women to kind of does these polls and ask them questions like, hey, what do you want to know? What do you mm. want to see on your labels? Mm. Um, what do you want to push for? She's the one that gets and pushes for... Um, yeah, GMO labelling in America, mm, for example. Mm, mm. She's also pushing for regulations around glyphosates and that sort of stuff. So she came up with a group of other ladies that were talking about exactly the same intro. The mm-hmm. world is dying. We've got mm-hmm. 40 to 60 years of topsoil left. Mm-hmm. If there's a couple of small changes we can make now that will directly extend that out to 100. Mm-hmm. So it's already you're just sitting there going, okay, so we can double the length of time we've got just by making a couple of small changes, which yeah. I will talk to you about in a sec because I want to push for this as well. So they went through and said, the topsoil, we're running out of topsoil. The reason why we're running out of topsoil, mentioned earlier, bacteria and fungi, heavily involved in the, the breakdown process of all the other plant matter to make soil, mm-hmm. and the, the regular use of glyphosates and Roundups and that sort of stuff is killing that. So we're, we're interrupting with the whole soil regeneration process by right. disturbing the microbiome of the dirt yes and losing the ability to decompose things properly and generate certain nutrients <laughs> so it makes sense hey? it does make sense so there's a large percentage of the nutrients that go into our plants that are directly derived from the microbiome of the soil mm. there's a large percentage of certain aspects of the soil that cannot be digested and converted into the things that we need in our soil without microbes absolutely and we have this constant need for sterilizing the soil yeah, and so they scary. talked about ways of regenerating the soil just through normal farming practices and that sort of stuff to help to regenerate the soil. They also talked a lot about glyphosate residues and that sort of stuff mm. in the plants and mm. and uh, avoiding you know, genetically modified strains that result in the use of more chemicals. Yeah, because most of the GMO stuff, Steve, oh, they're not genetically modifying it so we get more nutrients out of it. No, they're not even necessarily genetically modifying these things for extended shelf life or preservation of nutrients over a longer mm. period of time no, or anything like that. that. 
They're doing it to make it resistant to Roundup. Yeah, of course. So they can sell chemicals with it. Well, well, also because you can then, the, the farmer just drives on and everyone's seen it. You know, yeah. if you've been on farms, big tractors with yeah. big sprayers covering the whole crops. Yep. They're not walking around there with little spray going no. spray, spray, spray like we might do in the backyard. Yeah. This is the whole plant. So. Yeah, and the, the, the big problem with here is, is they do it too often and they do it at the yeah. wrong times. When they're talking about the glyphosate residue in the plants, they've, they traced back a massive problem to the amount of Roundup that we've got in our finished products, our cereals and mm. grains in particular. Mm. So things that are based on wheat, mm. soys, those cereals and grains are the worst. Mm, corn and too. even they even did a study where they found, you know, even the Ben and Jerry's ice creams, yeah. where they got, in, they got in trouble, found the pesticide residues. Yes. The highest amount of pes- pesticide residues was found in the cookie ones. Again, because it's got the flowers. Ah, so they've got flour. cookie dough yeah. ones. Yeah. Those cookie dough ones, are, and any of the ones that had broken bickies in them, yeah. they actually had the higher levels of glyphosate residue. <sighs> so that's what I think, and some of it might have been coming from the dairy, but a lot of it was also coming from the other ingredients used. Wow. And they found the cereals and grains are the worst. On cereals and grains in particular, they do a process using glyphosate called desiccation. Desiccation in chemistry is drying something. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. So in these cases, what like they you do... you heard of desiccant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put yeah, yeah. Product, we put yeah. in our things full of silicon and clay yeah. to suck up the moisture. Yeah. Well, in the instance of this, so that's a sneaky thing too, because even you see these words, like a word like desiccation, you think, oh, okay, oh, yeah. whatever. Sure. Um, but what that process in this instance is, is it's a, a final spraying of Roundup just prior to harvest. Right. So what they do is just prior to... Like, for example, I grew up in sugarcane country. Yes. Prior to harvest, they used to burn it. Okay, so they just burn the cane. Mm-hmm. that kill off all the weeds. Mm-hmm. It would take a lot of the moisture out, concentrate the sugar, improve their yield, mm. um, that sort of stuff. But Pure the burning... Snakes. It, yeah, exactly. Um, without the need for chemicals. Mm. And then they didn't get the chemicals in the finished product. Mm-hmm. But that burning was bad for the um, environment, the yeah. carbon in the mm-hmm. air. Mm-hmm. So they've stopped the burning and they started spraying. Right. So the spraying just prior to harvest leaves an abundance of glyphosate on the product. Of course it would. By eliminating the desiccation process, yeah. they can significantly reduce the amount of Roundup and glyphosate through the food chain. Right. They can also significantly reduce the amount of glyphosate and Roundup that's uh, residually left in the soil prior to the next crop because all of that sort of stuff then is recently covered and then ploughed back through the soil before the next crop goes yeah. on. So, yeah. so by simple step of removing this or banning desiccation. Yes. And this is one of the things that the mum of Asian digital mums people are pushing for, yeah. trying to get rid of desiccation because this can significantly remove the amount of glyphosate that's in our food chain that's contributing to the cancer, to the gut problems and all these behavioural problems and everything we've got. Mm. And then they even said that there's other techniques currently available that people don't use. So there's a thing called foam stream, which is like a... Um, it's foam like a stream. foam steam, I mean, I think. Yes. So it's a steam. So they ste- they kill the weeds with steam. Steam. So they make it like water. a foam steam that mm. sits on the, along the, covers the ground and kills them all the weeds off. Sounds and good. then the byproduct of that is water and, and the dead weeds, which, which is, is great. Good for the soil. Yeah, exactly. Another one was um, root wave technology, which was this. Root wave? Yeah, so they electrocute the roots. So they basically go through it. Shocking. And, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they do yes. a cool. It's probably what, probably the, imagine if Tesla had his way. Tesla. Imagine if Tesla had his way and he made the whole crust of the earth an electromagnetic it's, thing apart from where the, we can powerful enough to charge our phone while we're walking around and, and light bulbs and stuff. Yeah. We'd be all dead, wouldn't We'd we, We'd be Steve? dead, but it's a good idea, but I'd, we'd kill us. But apart from that, it's a good idea. Yeah, I think, yeah. It's and convenient. Kill off the roots too. Mate. Yeah, so this foam steam and this yep. root wave technology, mm-hmm. there are things already we can do to get rid of the desiccation. Mm-hmm. The rest of the time is trying to work on soil regeneration by working with farmers mm. to actually focus on making quality food, not just quantity, especially mm. if 40% of the stuff they make is wasted anyway. Yeah, yeah. Make good stuff. We're also looking at when you do soil properly, you can actually make foods with nutrients in it. Mm. And when those foods are grown properly and tested and shown to be full of nutrients, mm-hmm. then you don't need to spike them with synthetics. Spiking with synthetics. So what do you mean? They, they get the food and then they get synthetic vitamins and you mean they add that to the food? Yeah. Right. Uh, which is fine if they're honest about it. Mm. I mean, if, if that's the best you can do, well, that's the best you can do. Because apart, like we work with some farmers and get material standardised, so we mm. get the material we powder it and then test it. So, so we don't add synthetics back in? No. No. 
No, because be clear. in nature you get like nine different forms of folate or yeah. you know, eight different forms of B6. And, mm-hmm. you know, there's all these different things. So in nature you get all of those different forms. Yes. So what you don't get in nature is things like pyridoxine hydrochloride, hydrochloride yeah. or thiamine hydrochloride yeah. or well, you do get 5-MTHF, but you don't get calcium 5-MTHF yeah, and that right. sort of stuff. So what you got to realise, so when we get a food... We test the food for the levels of vitamins and then we just mix them together. Yeah. What a lot of other people do is they kind of do this. It's what bugs me, like I said, when people aren't transparent. And what really, really irks me is when people use an emotional argument mm. to get an attention and then do the old bait and switch. Mm. You know, like that magician, here, look at my hand over here while I do something over here. Because what, the, what bugs me is like, you know, I went to that first day's seminar mm-hmm. and that was evil. That bugs me. But they were like openly evil. Yes. So if I didn't like what I was hearing, I didn't need to do that. Correct. When people go through and talk an emotional argument about one side, but then do the old bait and switch and sell you something else, it bugs me because you can get plant material, you can get something off a farm. Mm. And you can spike it with a synthetic. Yeah. And if you tell people that I'm going to give you plant material that's got lots of good nutrients, lots of good mm-hmm. antioxidants, it's got all the cofactors, got lots of different forms of those vitamins. Mm-hmm. But I'm also going to add a bit of synthetic vitamin to standardise it to make sure you know what you're going to get. Yeah. So you can make. And if you claim. can say that, that's cool. If you want to do but it. But what yeah. a lot of people are doing is actually trying to pretend that these vitamins are part of the food. Mm. For example, they'll say. Um, um, beta carotene with in carrot, carrot. Yeah, or something yeah, like that. Like, yeah. I, I'm trying to think of an example. Yeah. Um, although a classic one is they'll, you'll see pyridoxine hydrochloride mm. and then it'll say from rice or yes. something like that. And then you go, well, pyridoxine hydrochloride, that's that's pyridoxine, that's a synthetic, synthetic compound. Vitamin. And so then what you realise they're doing is getting some plant material and then spiking it with synthetic. So they're buying from those guys from that first day, those guys that are making genetically mod- synthetic vitamins from genetically modified sugar, mm-hmm. genetically modified yeast, that are contributing to the destruction of the world and the soil mm-hmm. and perpetuating that for their own profit and gain. Mm-hmm. Some of these companies are buying their vitamins and adding it to their plant powders they're getting from the farm so they're still supporting that other I- dodgy industry, mm-hmm. but they're, they're talking this a big emotional game about how they're going to save the world, how they're going to fix the soil, how they're working directly with the farmers. But they mm-hmm. obviously have no respect for those farmers yeah. or no pride in what those farmers are making, mm-hmm. not even enough to test those foods to see if they're a naturally sourced, good source yeah, of those yeah. vitamins. Yeah, I see what Because if those farmers were doing their good job and they're making good soil and they're contributing to this stuff and providing material such as carrot powder, then that yeah. carrot powder should be able to be tested. And the carotenoid levels in that carrot powder should be measurable mm-hmm. and they can be used instead of a synthetic beta carotene. Mm. So what's a te- trend at the moment is people are buying greens powders or they're, they're using like plant excipients, like rice excipients, mm-hmm. um, and claiming those things to be foods full of vitamins. But mm. they're not. They're just putting synthetic vitamins in plant powder. Mm. So they're still supporting the whole GMO, chemically synthesized, fake food and not right. It just does not follow the laws of nature. Yes. While they're talking up a big emotional game about fixing the soil and fixing the environment and sticking the carbon in the dirt instead of the sky and you know like they talk all this sort of stuff and they get people all excited they go and do these campaigns about banning roundup and Mm. talking about their farms don't use roundup and their farms use blockchain oh don't start me on blockchain blockchain Blockchain, i'm gonna start what what is blockchain just quickly Uh, blockchain is a new thing that you're probably going to start to see everywhere Ah. so you know everyone see clean labels and transparency through blockchain you can get pockets of data that gets like for example the farmers that are making certain foods going to certain factories so they'll go through and you can get details of the actual farmers Mm. Um, so through blockchain you get these pockets of data that allows you to trace where your finished product is the theory is that if i get a pizza with an egg on the top i can tell which chicken laid that egg and wow. where it was. The reality is not that case because mm. we're 
multiple, might be a million chicken farmers delivering to one processing plant. Right. That, and that, that carton of eggs might come from 12 different farmers. Yes, because Which eggs. each of them have a thousand different chickens, you know. So, mm. like, the reality of it is, is if you're working straight from farmer to fork, maybe mm. you could actually do it. But if you're doing anything processed that involves steps, it's just an illusion yeah. of transparency that people get caught into a a rabbit warren and they'll never get out and then they think oh man i know the answer's in here somewhere but i just don't have the time to work it out wow so so i don't think it's going to work myself but a lot of people would do it a lot of people will be into it because they'll think that it's good marketing and then people will realize that it's actually not so so So. just to clarify we've got uh a gmo which of course uh is genetically modified food and in america you don't have to label as gmo and european you do now now the, the million dollar question is if it is like let's assume for one second that it's perfectly healthy for you, no yeah. problems at all, why wouldn't you label that? Yeah, exactly. Because the idiots, Steve, think it's bad for them and they well, won't the buy it. Do. So those yeah, the idiots labels, you mean the, the consumer. consumer. According to these guys, I'm not saying it, but these guys, yeah, are, yeah. These guys that don't want to label GMO because mm. they're, they're not proud of it. They feel it should be Why hidden. wouldn't you be proud of it? Oh, well, they know the truth, Steve, mm. probably. But no, they're, they're, so they're, they're, they're thinking is... They're, they're thinking is that if they label it, the market research shows that if it's labelled, people won't buy it. So right. for that reason, they don't want to have to label it. They don't want to educate people. So they don't, Yeah, exactly. Why wouldn't you go and educate people that what you're doing is right? If yeah. it's right, and I mean, if you're a genius created by God and believe mm. that that this is all there and all these other people you're doing it to save, then they will believe you. Yes, if you, there's evidence. If, if, if whatever made you convinced that this was the right thing to do, yeah. you present that evidence to other people, intelligent people or not even as intelligent as you with enough education, you should be able to explain it to Absolutely. them. Absolutely. And they should be obviously come up with the same solution. Or publish studies. Or, you know, but you know. Their, their intuition mm. or their gut or their their whatever it gets in the way and they don't buy it, then... then and you're doing them a disservice. That's what they That's honestly believe. That's just scary, isn't They honestly it? believe they're so much smarter than the rest of us that that they should have authority to lie to us. So so we're, we're talking about, and, and I don't want to get political here, but, but communism is the idea that the government knows better for the people than what the people know themselves. Yep. Okay, that's communism, basically. You know, and in, in you know, Eastern Germany, pre-1989, of course, um, they basically said we are going to run the people because we know what's best. Everywhere else yeah. is evil on this. And you know, yeah. years ago, I dated an East German girl, so I know I've been to East Germany. Yeah. And this was, was the line told to them, and, and they were brought up this way. And, yeah. and it was uh, uh, so they're basically like I, I don't want to you know bring communism to food, but mm. it sounds like that these people know better than the consumers. Yeah. So the consumers need to be lied to, yep. like the East Germans were, yep. to yep. say no, nah, the West Germans are evil. Yep. They'll, you know, kill you and all this sort of stuff. So, okay, so we're going to take away your decisions and yep. that that's the way it's, it's looking. That That's communism. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow. What's worse about this, this isn't just one country. These no. people are trying to control the food security for the world and they lobby to governments to get their agenda across and then the government decides what you get. Yeah. So you've got communism. one group of people manipulating, like, the whole EU. Yep. Though, but it backfired on them. It didn't quite work because they... They're smarter. Because of Brexit. Yeah, The yeah. people in, in England wanted out of Brexit. Yeah. They wanted out of Europe. Yeah. So these guys here, they kicked out of Europe. Well, they're not kicked out of Europe. They're running out of Europe because Europe's making them label what they're doing. Yeah. They're going over to America going, well, here's our land of opportunity. Yes. We're going to go and lie to all these guys for as long as possible. So when the French built the... Um, and lying to them, Steve. Yeah. They're saying it's fermented bloody food when it's a genetically modified bug rot. Uh, feeding on sugar pooping out a chemical that they want it's designer it's designer drugs using genetically modified everything scary and that they're trying to trick us into thinking it's food and like you're saying if what they would do if what they if they genuinely believed mm. what they're doing was right genuinely if, they, if their gut instincts weren't saying man you know geez you, there's a reason why you're not sleeping at night you know like <laughs> yeah if their gut instincts were you know mm. on board with this they mm. would be labeling gmo like you would not believe. And they'd be so proud of it. And so, they'd be saying, so we've, this is how smart we are. So this reminds me of when the French gave the uh, Statue of Liberty to the Americans. Yeah. Where this is a liberty, this is the home, except yeah. it sounds like these Europeans have moved into America because they've seen a hole in the market saying, yeah. you don't have to label this stuff. Yeah. Even, you know, everyone hates this stuff. Yeah. 
So because you don't have to label it, we're going to move in here. We're going to lie to the people. Yep. And we are going to – because you're too stupid. Yeah. So we're going to lie to you. Yeah. You're yeah. too dumb people. Yeah. Everyone listening, I'm not saying that. Yeah. But don't write letters to me. Those you're too dumb, so, so we're yeah. not going to label it. And that's horrendous. Yeah. That's That's communism. Yeah, yeah. And so that's what they're doing. So then on the other side of it, we get these people with a great agenda. Mm. They're really pushing it. We've got these mums groups teaming up with these companies. But unfortunately – a lot of the products, there's no, a lot of them aren't going to that next degree that we go to to actually make foods from farms tested to show they're full of nutrients. Mm, mm. They're just still doing the fortifying of foods with synthetics. Yes. Still compensating for the fact that farmers are inferior. Mm, mm. Like, it, it's like, where's your self esteem? Like, yeah. come on, like, test your food, man. I guarantee you it's going to be full of, if you're making it the way you say, that stuff will be awesome for awesome nutrients. Food. Maybe you need to eat more or maybe you need to dose more than a capsule. But you know what I mean? Like there are, this is a very important thing. And what I want people to do is look for the product and ask the question. Go mm. back to these people and they're talking a big game about supporting farmers mm. and soil. Mm. Ask the question, like, do you just have synthetics added to some greens powder yeah and it'll read the label yeah. and another suspect thing that people got to be aware of is when they see a greens powder with synthetics in it the yeah. synthetics have got 10 50 100 you know all these rounded perfect yeah, numbers yeah. it's like no, and they mate. usually they'll always have like a hydrochloride yeah, on it yeah or hcl a, yeah, yeah hcl after it or uh what's another example of known uh, um, oh they have oxides they have like uh, a phosphate uh, yeah, periodoxal phosphate. phosphates and that yeah. sort of stuff instead of the other periodoxal compounds yeah exactly um, it's, it's all, um, you can tell a synthetic, it's got the numbers that are really yeah. perfectly rounded. But I tell you what, man, they're, e they're all evil on this <laughs> sense because, like, you have a look at folate, for example. Folate, yeah. They've got new laws with folate labelling now called dietary folate equivalent or oh, DFE. Yeah. So what it is is folic acid is extremely stable because it's a synthetic, it's a hydrox. it's already been destroyed. Yeah, it's oxidised. So it's folate that's been oxidised oxidized and damaged into its final form. Yeah, like rust is stable. Yeah, 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 rust is very stable. So that's what folic acid, that's a classic example. Um, so then when we take folic acid, we've got to recreate it back into our body, mm. into the forms that our body uses. We have genes for that, Such don't we? things as, oh yeah, I'm not going to talk about that. Ow! Um, so, <laughs> such things as the... Um, so, for example, we convert folic acid back into an active thing called 5-MTHF, 5-methylene mm. tetrahydrofolate, and it's 5-methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. Thank you very much, Steve. That's the one. No, so, with this dietary folate equivalent, yes. if I use the natural forms of folate yep. that's found in foods, they aren't as stable as folic acid because they can be rusted or they can be oxidized, oxidized and yeah. turned into folic acid. Yeah. So, a natural folate, according to the... FDAs and that sort of stuff mm. is not as effective as folic, is not as stable as folic acid, mm -hmm. and therefore, and the bioavailability is not the same. Mm. Therefore, it's not as good as folic acid. Even right. though once you absorb that folic acid, your body's can, got to convert, convert it, back. it back. Yeah. So if I label folic acid as a synthetic, if I put folic acid into my product, mm. like for example, I put one milligram of folic acid, mm. I can label one thing. milligram of folic acid as one milligram dietary folate equivalent sure if i use natural folates then i can only get 0.6 so for example if i put in my one milligram of dietary folates natural yeah. folates i'm yeah. only allowed, allowed to label 0.6 0.6 milligrams 0.6 milligram dietary folate equivalent, even though i'm giving dietary folates yes so folic acid is not a dietary folate no but it actually you can use less of that and label more of that so, and you can label folic acid, which is not found in the diet, as dietary folate equivalent. And I am forced to label my dietary folate exactly mm. the same as their non-dietary folate, but they get to use less and claim more. I hope you're following this out here. Oh, so, man, it's so complicated. It is. So, so, so basically, and I'll cut a long story short, is if you use a synthetic non-active form, it's counted as more active according to the FDA. Yeah. Right. Right. Not only is it cheaper, nastier, stable, more stable, oxidized. and that's why they fortify foods with it too. Yeah, and that's why it's added to fortified foods. So when I'm talking about these poor farming practices, has mm. led to our nutritional deficiencies in food. Mm. Poor farming practices, these GMO strategies, and consumer demand has led to reduction of polyphenols and yep. mod biotics and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. They're fortifying our foods with the vitamins. Mm -hmm. No one's fortifying our foods back with polyphenols because they go brown when you slice it and that yeah. sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're fortifying our food. So what these other companies are doing, they're talking about farming, they're talking about soils, they're talking about saving the world through soil, saving the world through micronutrients mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. 
but then they still go through and fortify their foods with synthetics. <sighs> so just keep an eye out for that because don't fall for the emotion because I saw a massive amount of that. So mm. the whole world wants clean labels. They want transparency. They want to save the world. We want to do the right thing for mm. the environment. Mm. Environmentally sustainable is not good enough when we're finding out that we've got 40 to 60 years of topsoil left. We need environmental regenerative. Right. Now, what's, so, what's the difference between that? Oh, I don't know. But no one's really doing <laughs> no, no, the regenerative but, but, bit. The big point is, is like we've run a whole industry where through the 80s and 90s, we, we honestly thought the future of us was eating space food sticks and yep. consuming um, Tetra Pak proteins and, and you know, designer foods that way and that sort of stuff to the point that we're now coming into this era where we're going, man, we just want normal fruit and vegetable like our parents had. Yes. You know? Um, so the world is changing significantly but not to the way they thought. I still remember the McDonald's in those styrofoam you know, hydrofluorocarbon yeah. made things. And, and we thought that was great because it kept it warm and it was yeah. sterile. And like, yeah. what's so wrong like, with this? Apart from ozone death. But, yeah. but you know, so, so we've gone on. We're, we're slowly getting back to what reality is and what we've eaten yeah, for we start, millions of years. Yeah, starting to realise that following the laws of nature makes sense. Mm. But there's a, then that, so everyone's looking for that at the moment, the consumer demand, all the market research I've shown, that's what people want. Mm. All the way from the baby boomers mm. through the millennials. There's a lot of interesting stuff. But, so what you saw is all the trends of the new products. That's what they're doing. Mm. Well, that's what they're trying or pretending to do. Yes. And this is what's, it's disgusting actually, because you go through and so like the big trend, of course, at the moment is plant protein. So plant protein. I'm roaming around trying to find a plant protein that's not chalky and horrible yeah. to taste and that sort of stuff. Like I keep saying, I like the hemp, I like the rice. There's a couple of really good ones that are coming through. Never been a big fan of the pea, never been mm. a big fan of the soy, blah, blah, blah. But as I'm going through, I'm going, so cool, tell me your story. Tell me how you're environmentally regenerative. Yes. And these people are like, oh, no, no, we're still destructive. So yeah. because we've gone through an era of destroying the environment just because we can, because there yeah. was a lot of the earth. Yeah, so unlimited. That, yeah, exactly. I think, and I still remember, oh, we still got 50 years of coal left, just keep going. Yeah, like, but I, I just, um, so we've gone through an era of destroying things, and then we've gone through an era of saying, well, we need to be sus environmentally sustainable, we mm -hmm. can't keep destroying everything. Mm. But that doesn't work. We got to, well, now we're talking about environmentally regener regenerative. Mm. A co good company is a company to follow is one that's actually working towards improving the quality of the farmers that they're working with, yeah. improving their life, improving their soil, therefore improving their produce. So we can use less of that material with a higher nutrient density, mm. lower macronutrient energy. Yep and higher micronutrient. And this is, again, we were talking before about global warming. So mm. they talk about the farming and global warming, but actually the farming speeds up with global warming. Of course, because CO2 though? is plant food. Yeah, just a, about 0.04% of the um, uh, atmosphere is carbon dioxide, and, and uh, global warming is the burning of, say, fossil fuels, and we'll yep. simplify that. And, of course, a lot of it's volcanic activity, about 97%, I think, is, is, is uh, volcanic CO2. Mm. It's released naturally all the time. And the CO2 is plant food because when you add CO2 to H2O, mm -hmm. it forms glucose, the basic building blocks of, you know, carbohydrates which are found in plants. So that's your yep. bit of, it's called photosynthesis. So yeah. it's made in the presence of light. Yeah. And I know we've talked a lot about So the more carbon you've got in the atmosphere yep. and the more heat and sun or whatever CO2, it is, yep. the faster plants grow. Correct. The end result of that is you get an abundance of food, mm -hmm. macronutrients, though, yep. not micro. No. So you actually grow big, hollow, empty stuff. We always talk about the shittier seasons for growing produce the best products yes. because you get less macronutrients, more micronutrients. Well, you also get more cerulins and, and, uh, and polyphenols. And, 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 other, and, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, those compounds to protect the plant from disease while it's weak. Yeah. So there's a lot of those sort of cool things. But So with global warming, we're actually getting um, nutrient deficiencies. Yeah. So then these people are fortifying it again with micronutrients. Mm. we still got to work with the soil and rebuild it, which is why it's so important to work with farmers that mm. actually measure their food to confirm that they're getting the nutrients in the food, mm. confirming that their soil is of good quality. Yep. And then they work with a uh, cam campaign to actually make that better and better each mm. season, not mm. worse and worse, to a point where they're stuck buying well, chemicals and buying new seeds every season absolutely. and trying to get a contract. You well, know? well, right now in, in the evolution of the earth of 4.54 billion years old, we're actually in a period of low CO2 in the atmosphere, believe it or not, historically. And so we, when we went through periods where there was no grass on the on the planet, yeah, uh, uh, there was a lot of CO two in the atmosphere, yeah, yeah, and a lot yeah. of it's been sucked out. So 
now you know we're coming out of a period of low CO two. Yep. Um, from a history point of view, not not from a decades, but yeah. from you know millions the of large, years. We're talking about ice yeah. age and hot age. Yeah, they, those sorts of up, things. Is it called hot age? A hot age? No, no, they're just called they call just the not heat. the ice age. Yeah, not the ice age. That, yeah, but there, there's only ice ages, and they, yeah. there's one coming in about fifteen thousand years, I reckon. So what are they talking? About? Hang on, this is going to bug me now. What? So they got an ice age, but they don't have a the hot bits in between. Oh no, the, 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 the globe the globe heats up and cools down all the time. We're yeah. in a relatively cool period as far as it's you like know, respirators that breathe in and out. Yeah, yeah, carbon. yeah. yeah. Well, you, you know, sixty five million years ago, when no, I, I, don't, I was, oh, I was, I was, I was around. Yeah. I was only a kid around then. Yeah, yeah. But there was these big dinosaurs that roamed the earth. Yeah. And that was very much warmer then, and they were reptiles because they're yeah. warm blooded. Well, you know, warm blooded. They they had to get heated from the atmosphere because they died out due to this lovely asteroid that that knocked them out. And so basically, ever since then, you know, the little mammals have taken over, and yeah. the, the, the globe has become warmer. And reptiles have yeah. gone down on the food chain, well, down on the food chain, but they've gone down in numbers dramatically because yeah, right. we're in a period of global cooling. Yeah, you yeah. Know, about about twenty thousand years ago, we had another ice age because we had used to have the rainforest in Antarctica and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It was a, the globe was a lot warmer uh, many yeah. years ago. Yeah. Um, and sea levels have changed dramatically. It's a very dynamic system. And so in the meantime, we're trying to live on this planet yeah. and maintain food yep. with nutrients. And this is one of the, the catches when they, they get into the environmental debate and mm-hmm. trying to work out how to do it. So the big thing is, is it's, it's all cool. And I love, I love the discussion and mm. the dialogue and I love that motion and the motivation and that that particular driving of that concern mm. like mm. let's think about the farmers let's think about where our food comes from let's think about making so properly think about recycling our soils and regenerating our soils and mm. that but don't sell a shitty product in <laughs> in as a part of a campaign to do that no um so just be aware of that because in the industry trends that i saw there is a lot of like I was saying, there's plant proteins just made using weird ass hexane solvents or just you know aluminium vats with solvents, and you look at mm. this stuff and it's genetically modified. Mm. And so there's a lot of weird stuff. Like I showed you some photos of those algae that were yes. grown. They show the satellite photos where these algae are grown underneath airports and uh, in main estuary systems of capital cities. It's just mm. like. Um, so just be aware that a lot of people are going to push this agenda moving into the future of plant-based everything. Mm. Um, find out how these plants are made because if these companies are not supporting an environmental regenerative process and they're going to continue to work towards the destruction of the topsoil to replace it with lab food and insects and genetically modified stuff, that's not the future I want to be no, eating. No, I don't want to be Yeah, eating. I want nice gourmet food and work with the farmers. I'm old, so I'm going to die sooner than all this happens, but, but I still want it to be left, you know, but, because we've got about yeah. 4 billion years of, of Earth life left until the sun yeah. swallows us. So yeah. sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Well, I'm not but, talking about I'm talking about us will be dead. Yeah. Like, yeah. we'll destroy the soil, we'll starve off, and the Earth will be fine. Yeah, the Earth will be It'll fine. It'll use us to regenerate the soil. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, so some of the trends that were coming out, there's oh, yeah. a lot of people so everything's moving towards food format and away from pills Good. there's a lot of category blending that's coming like for example now the new thing for cosmetic for the first time in the history is eating it like for everything mm. everything now skin you got to eat it like yeah. you have your yeah antioxidants and yep. you got to have your collagens when they all work internally you can't regenerate your skin unless you're taking these pills or these foods Just where typically sense. the cosmetic was on the skin yeah you know? so we're seeing these bl- um, blurring lines like for example we're now seeing a lot of autoimmune and inflammatory stuff that control gut. They all work around the gut. Of course they do. Um, in previous years when I used to turn up with this, I used to like going around talking about a lot of these new amino acids. A lot of new you – know, we, we spend a bit of time in the sports industry. Mm. So I'm always fascinated to know about um, – glutamines or uh, you know alpha what's the new forms of arginines yeah. and you know, they, yeah. yeah so yeah. we always went through the alpha ketoglutarates the fumarates the mm. nitrates the, They're all so the we've gone through all of these different forms of um, amino acids this mm. year nothing nothing I was roaming around there is no new real innovation in amino acids there's a few peptides coming out peptides are a little bit weird yeah, um, joined amino acids yeah so they're joining a couple of amino acids together to either have a peptide like a drug like effect yeah. or just slow down or control the the digestive ability of a protein food or something like that. So mm. there's not a huge amount of excitement technology there. Most of the sports industry is going towards botanicals. Nice. But the scariest part of this is a lot of these trademark blends. So you see things in the past that were like massive, like previous years, ashwagandha, like with, everything was ashwagandha. That's and KS, KSM66 was the famous one because they were saying everyone's fraudulent and these guys are legit. Um, so you've got to use their product and they had some trials. 
it's tanking. I can see that that that's, seems to be mm. coming right off the boil. Um, main reason why, when I'm speaking to a lot of people, is that with a lot of those trademark blends, have a look for this. They'll measure an active ingredient, like for example, the active ingredient ashwagandha is a withanolide. They might say that that is standardised, mm. or we're going to guarantee that you get twenty percent, which is always weirdly round numbers like that too, like you're saying yeah, before. So we're going to guarantee you get twenty percent of these withanolides every mm. batch, mm. no more, no less. Mm. Nature doesn't work that way. Nah. Um, but that's only 20% of the powder. The other mm. bit of the powder, we want to know what it is. So HPLC testing, we'll do, uh, what are we, qualitative and quantitative. That so it'll say it's thing. there, yeah. but it's also there at this amount. Yes. Um, TLC testing will just say if it's there or not. Just like, yeah. did it turn up? Yes. Uh, you know, so um, what they'll often do is they'll do one of the actives they might measure through HPLC so mm-hmm. they can say it's 20%. Mm-hmm. Then what they'll do is they'll say the species, they'll do TLC, mm-hmm. um, and just basically say, see, I told you it's from Withania. Mm. But that still leaves 80% of the powder to be variable from batch to batch. Could so when they, make, when they make a batch up for their trials, they might have used the good stuff. And then previous batches, they might have had a weak season or a bad season. They might have want to improve their profit margin and, and turn 20% of that to active and 80% to a filler. Because just for people who don't know, because you can drop the actives of a herb by simply watering it. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> it takes up Swells water. up. It's got yeah. less... New, less by percentage yeah with anisides or whatever you're measuring yep so watering it stuffs your plants yeah. so often what a lot of these trademark blends are is they've just got an active which they do mm. standardize and advertise the rest of the powder they can do what the bloody hell they like and they refuse to disclose and i'll go through and say i want non-gmo i want this that and they go oh from batch to batch it may vary we can't mm. commit to that mm. well that doesn't fit with our due diligence and no. if you can't tell us what your product is and how can I have a marker of standardization from batch to batch? Yeah. And so what's happening is a lot of the industries going that way. So some of the good companies, though, they're more than happy to disclose. They'll do the whole blend mm. through HPLC testing mm. so you know exactly what you're dealing with, yep. how much is filler, how much is herb, how much is actives. Um, so that, that's the way the industry's going. There's a lot more food products, a lot less pills. Um, everyone's wanting to move from the aisles in the shopping centers mm-hmm. to the outside. Because that's where fresh food fresh sold. Food, yeah. So they're trying to get into that mindset yeah. of being a fresh food. Mm. This is what bugs me when these people try to trick their into thinking their product is a fresh food or a mm. food when it's genetically modified Franken food. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, a lot of stuff is all about um, uh, brain health. Um, everyone wants brain health. Everyone wants <laughs> nootropics. There's a funny thing. Uh, that, that and a nootropic is something that boosts your brain. Makes you smarter mm. and that sort of stuff. But instead of just legal highs you know like in previous years it was all about the different forms of caffeine mm. the different forms of energy tonics and that sort of stuff and this one is no no we're specifically talking about cognitive benefit mm. there's no point just making someone wired but tired mm. like mm. we actually want to make them sharp and focused so um uh vegan everything was the other one um and the funny thing was too so you know uh, with us we make a product called no way uh which is a bovine collagen okay so we were one of the i, I think we drove a big expansion yeah, into that market so. into australia before yeah. that people couldn't understand why we're doing it so the funny thing is i went around and visited a lot of the other booths um that was selling the collagen just curiosity and just went through and asked them you know so how's your supplier where's mm. it come from mm. man these guys are like man i know a bloke in brazil that can give me five ton at this price if mm. you want it but you've got to sign up for it now mm. like man seriously the the collagen worldwide has taken off so much that there's a massive shortage of proper collagen wow hence marine collagen so what's happened marine now? Marine collagen. So marine collagen's the new big thing, apparently, because no one can get bovine collagen. Mm. So pig collagen's not so good because there's parts of the world that don't want pig. Yes. The beef collagen's excellent, and that's the one that we make most of the good peptides like we use for our no-way stuff. Um, but because there's this massive world shortage now of bovine collagen, especially the clean stuff, mm. and by the way, we test ours for glyphosate residues and find none. I challenge any of the grass-fed, the people that claim about being the clean grass-fed people to do the same thing. It'd be interesting to see. But um, so this marine collagen is the new thing coming out because Mm. the glucosamine industry is tanked. They used to use all the scales and um, shelves and all that sort of stuff to actually make um, glucosamines. Mm -hmm. Now they're using it to make marine collagen. So Mm. the byproduct of the... So that everyone's looking for collagen. They've moved on to marine collagen. They're just the bones and the scales and that of the fish mm. left over from that fish oil industry and the seafood industry. Yes, where they're, about that. They're just giving you that. So it's cool, but it's got no peptides. It's just collagen mm. and it's just, just marine collagen. So 
Yeah, not so um, good. Yeah, so that's interesting. So that that's that's most of the the stuff. So coming off the balls, the aminos are tanking. Yeah. There's no real weird compounds coming out for the sports industry. All the new stuff for sports industry, a lot of it is coming out with herbal mm. sort of blends and mm. that sort of stuff because of that whole natural market of mm. that weekend warrior taking mm. over from the hardcore athletes and those people wanting to get food is medicine so mm. everyone wants to, uh, their food to be everything now yeah. which i'm so proud of yes. because that was the whole naturopathic uh, you know thing absolutely probiotics are still booming but it's the same old shit <sighs> they're all just lactobacillus 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 i've got a few ones that i'm specifically looking for that i've been roaming around yeah. cannot find them to save my life so mm. i'm going to keep pushing because i do want to create my own solution for this mm. because what everyone's doing at the moment is just so wrong there's a lot of confusion out there. Um, and, and the other thing is, there's a lot of people out there selling Saccharomyces nutritional yeast as a probiotic where it's not. No. Um, because in this nutritional yeast, they kill it. Yes. So in the nutritional yeast, they actually heat treat it to sterilize it, stop it from growing, and then measure the nutrients before you take it. So there's Saccharomyces boulardii, Saccharomyces cerevisiae are available as probiotic yeasts, mm, mm. which you can buy. They can be shelf stable. Yep. You can take them as probiotic. Just be aware there's a lot of people out there selling nutritional yeast as a probiotic. Live yeast, yeah. Which is not the case. Ask for a CFU, which is a colony forming unit, so it's how many units they'll form. Yeah, yeah. So if it doesn't no, give that, them that. No. They won't be able to give you it because it doesn't. And then they'll explain, oh, no, no, we heat treat it. So that's why you don't get those. <laughs> anyway, so the other the other most exciting things for me was I managed to catch up with a couple of other friends of mine from the industry. Ah. And, and like get to sit down and talk shop. What's you know? the gossip? Yeah, I love, I mean, I, not so much gossip. I just... I like to find out cool stuff. Yeah. Like I sit down and have dinner with a guy that invented like creatine as a supplement. Oh. And just say, let's just talk, man. Tell me how it happened. Creatine's a sports supplement. Yeah, and muscles. it all started. He's sitting there going, NFL players were told to eat a lot of steak. Mm. They went and analyzed the steak, found creatine in it, and were curious to see if creatine in the steak was helping their performance. Yeah. And then they just started investigating it. Well, it's, it's funny, eh? And then, yeah, even the same people... Um, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to work on a pro uh, pre-workout and that sort of stuff as well. I get really excited about these pre-workouts at Nootropics. And, yeah. I mean, we used to have a product called Limitless, which we haven't had for a while. I love that product. Um, we discontinued it mm. and I've never really found something that I think is good enough to take its place. And, mm. and um, so I've been working pretty hard on that. Still haven't finalized a formula, but, man, we're doing some fun trials. It's amazing. Like the, the creatine story with the steak, I mean... You know, we had steak the night. Next morning, Beck wakes up and said, oh, I worked out really hard at the gym. And I said, oh, it's yeah. the steak. Yeah, yeah. And, and so she listens to this. So she, I'm glad you said it. And I didn't no, pop you not, to say no, it. No, didn't mean. It's not yeah. me, mate. So there you go. So Good. it doesn't help with the fact that the, uh, the world's been taken over by vegans, according to this. Well, they sneak recent. in with the humans, you know, this vegan. <laughs> no, the, well, the funny thing is, is um, <laughs> yeah, how we've been doing these pillars. and that. So I've been talking a lot about essential fatty acids, talking yeah. a lot about vitamins. And, yep. Like the vegan... The vegan style, of, the vegan diet, is becoming a bit more appealing if you do it properly. The way mm. I look at it, in fact, I just like meat. You know, I mean, yeah. I'd be a bit different if I had to kill my animals to eat them, though. I'd say I'd eat a lot of fish, I reckon. Yeah, but um, a lot of fish. Yeah. So anyway, um, the big point that I wanted to make in this podcast today was just be very skeptical about it. There's a massive push in the industry to get that emotional purchase. Mm. They want you to buy it because you're going to give them a well for some starving person in Africa or they want you to buy it because they're going to fix these soils. Uh, just double check because mm. there's a massive campaign going where we've got the clean label movement where people mm -hmm. are saying like no gluten, no dairy, no nasties, all natural, that sort mm -hmm. of stuff. But then there's also an emotional label movement where these people are going, we're going to give a well to someone in a place. You know, so we're going to sell all these plastic bottles and then mm. contribute some money towards cleaning up the environment okay. it's just like well you're contributing a lot of waste to the environment to be able to generate some money to fix the environment yeah. that's a very strange it's one it's a bit weird isn't it so you see a lot of these emotional people they talk about banning glyphosate or fixing the soil blah 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 but then they're still selling you a product that's contributing to exactly the same problem they're arguing is a problem as, as against and they might be to clean their conscience or something mm. because they know they're doing the wrong thing and i don't know man just 
it's just important for people to check because there was a horrible theme running through this trend of lying to the consumer. That, yes. that doing market research to say the consumer wants this. Yes. They want natural. They yeah. want clean. They want to feel good about the environment. They want to know when they're purchasing. Yeah. The more they give, more money they give this company, the better the world's going to be for it, not the richer one bloke's going to get. You know, mm-hmm. They want to know all those things. Yeah. So a lot of people do this market research and they tell them people what they want to hear, yep. but then sell them something else. The old bait and switch. So just be aware of that. And we're trying through these podcasts, we're trying to educate you what to look for so you know how mm. not to be tricked and mm. that sort of stuff and and we're also trying to educate you to go back to your 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 other companies that you purchase from mm. and all that sort of stuff tell them what you want mm. tell them how you want it and also make sure that they're aware that you know the tricks that they're trying to pull on you you know yes. so if you have any questions from us and we will try to help any way we can we're in a sticky situation where we never mention other brands or mm. we do have a code of ethics at our company first do no harm mm-hmm. so that also means not talking about damaging other mm. people or brands mm. or hurting people's feelings and stuff so you know like that's oh. that's a hard mission to I follow think i upset some communists today though it, oh probably right? yeah probably that's fine that's all right yeah if it's at mount isa that's Did I tell you that time i was up north australia i got beaten up by a heap of miners and then their mum come and took them away <laughs> <laughs> i was thinking of the bloody minor birds the indian minor birds oh, no, my mates. yeah i like them too yeah all right. All right. Well, uh, that's about all we've got time for. We really, you know, we've really gone over it. That's been great. Oh, I've enjoyed that. That's been good. That's really interesting, all that stuff. Thanks, Steve. Awesome, mate. No, thank you. No, no, I and mean, it's important to see because, like, most people would either gone to one or the other. Mm. So most people, well, I mean, I, I probably would have too if I knew exactly what was going on, but it's kind of cool that I go in and see. And I don't have um, egos as such, and I never think that I'm right. All the, I actually mm. probably have low self-esteem of anything, usually think that I'm probably wrong. Because mm. I've been thinking, what? Hasn't anyone else thinking the same thing? Mm. So when it's good to go to those things because I can go in there open-minded and like I listen open-minded and I'm trying to learn. And I spent half this thing trying to learn and I'm just like, oh, quickly, stop trying to learn this because they're going to make you evil. So it's really... Not many other people get access to that stuff, mm. especially people like myself that have the motivation to share it with other people mm, mm. at the risk of well, I actually probably don't understand the full risks of sharing half the stuff I share, but um, yeah, we'll see and see. Cool. All right. So well, if you're watching this video, day. I've been murdered. By yes. The, those GMO the conspiracy people. people. All right. Well, have a great day guys. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for listening. And remember, question everything. Well, except what we say.